Welcome to Passport Required. I'm Kim Covert, owner and lead travel designer at Silverleaf Travel. And I'm Gary Covert. Together, we are on a mission to help experienced travelers and would-be travelers get even more informed, inspired, and get moving so that they can enjoy great travel experiences and make memories that will last. We believe that travel offers so many opportunities to improve the quality of our lives. Travel helps us learn more about the world, ourselves, and those closest to us. It keeps us vibrant, fresh, and connected, and travel helps us celebrate life. We invite you to join the Silverleaf Travel Facebook page so that we can amplify our impact and help people get off of and stay off of what we'd like to call Someday Island. We know you're going to love this episode, so let's get after it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Passport Required. I'm Kim Covert. And I'm Gary Covert. We're really excited about another episode. This is a review of the Danube River Cruise that Mm -hmm. we've recently done. So it's kind of fresh in our memory. So we wanted to do a whole episode about this. Yeah, it's fresh in our memory, but it should be fresh in everybody's memory because it's such a great itinerary. The so we love river cruises. If you get us on this subject, we'll just gush about gush it. Gush about it. <laughs> so we think that they're great for people for a number of reasons. We've talked about those in uh, other episodes, but today we want to do an overview of the the Danube River. Mm-hmm. The reason being is because it's probably one of two top itineraries if you're going to do a river cruise. The yeah. other one being the Rhine River. Great for first timers. Yeah. So it's it's great for first timers for European river cruises. I think it's also a great way for somebody who's not very experienced with travel in Europe mm-hmm. to start to experience that. Today's going to be a, a kind of an overview of the Danube River. Why don't you start to take us through the itinerary? Where would you start and stop with this itinerary? With every river cruise, you can either start or end mm-hmm. on either direction, either mm-hmm. upriver, downriver. So for the Danube, you can either start in Budapest, end in Vilshof and Passau, depends on the itinerary, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Get on in Vilshof or Passau and then end in Budapest. Okay, so if you're Budapest doing the upper is, Danube. Yeah, Budapest is downstream and then mm-hmm. those Passau and Vilshof, yeah. those are upstream. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there's some major cities around the upstream, which you'll get into mm-hmm. uh, for, for pre and post. It, where would you like to start the itinerary? You want to start upstream or downstream? I would recommend, but let's start with Budapest. Okay. Because we, I love Budapest. We yeah. love Budapest. <laughs> oh, it's a great place to start and great place to end. It sounded so exotic. When we went, we flew into Budapest mm-hmm. and for, it's the capital of Hungary. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was so exotic. Just the, I didn't even know what to expect. You know, no I didn't idea. Know, but it turned out to be a very European city. <laughs> It is and a wonderful. great city. Yes, yeah, so easy to get around. It's a very walkable mm-hmm. city. It's not too big, mm-hmm. but just big enough yep. and beautiful and lots of history, of course. So, so we flew into, there's an inter- international airport mm-hmm. in Budapest. I think our itinerary left the U.S. I think we went through Madrid, Spain, and that then we did. went yeah. and then we flew into Budapest. And right. then the city of Budapest is only about a 20 minute, 30 minute drive Mm -hmm. or ride from the airport. So it's really not too far away. Yeah. There's Buda and there's Pest. So maybe just briefly kind of describe the city and what what are some of the things that are there? Yeah. The history, it Mm -hmm. used to be two different cities, Buda Mm -hmm. and Pest. And now they've come together. The Danube goes through the middle of them. Mm -hmm. The Buda's the hilly side Mm -hmm. where the castle is Mm -hmm. whatnot. And then you have the Danube. And then on the other side of the bank is Pest and it's Mm -hmm. flat. Mm -hmm. So it's really... An interesting city to see both sides. Yeah. (laughs) And you have multiple bridges Mm -hmm. that connect the two, the famous chain bridge. Yes. So that's been under renovation for the last few years. And it was all covered up when we went the first time. And I just went again a few months ago and it's uh, just about to open. But there's Margaret Bridge and Mm -hmm. a few others. Yeah. They're very very easy to get across. Yeah. So beautiful city. We won't give a lot of spoilers, but, you know, there's a, a up on, like you said, the Buddha side. There's some beautiful old, uh, I guess, a palace Mm -hmm. and castle are up there. And then down on the Pest side where it's flat, there's a cathedral. There's an opera house. There's that central market. The synagogue. Yeah, there's a a very old. Famous, yeah. The synagogue area over there, Jewish quarter. So there's really a lot to do. So typically, if people are going to come in, they're going to come in maybe two or three days before. I would recommend at least two days. There's so mm-hmm. much to see. And it depends on the itinerary that you're going to sail on as well. 
some of the cruise lines, you will get on the ship and stay there one night. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of depends on the itinerary you're sailing to. But yeah. at least two days, yeah. two full days. Yeah. One to get acclimated into. It's just there's so much to see yeah. and do. And the the major hotels are right there on the, mm -hmm. the river yeah. bank there's and an probably close to area. where you're going to be getting on your ship. Yep. Very yeah. easy to get around. So the Intercontinental. There's an Intercontinental. One. There's a Marriott. Then back a little bit, there's the Ritz. Okay. There's a Four Seasons. Okay. There's some non-chain, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful hotels, historic hotels. Uh, and they're just back a little bit. But okay. it's all very manageable. Yeah. So lots of options and lots of things to do there. There is kind of an interesting history there related to the the Soviets taking over mm -hmm. uh, the city. So there's that kind of recent kind of post-World War II experience mm -hmm. that they had. and. Yeah, just a fascinating city. So tell us about the Parliament building. Oh, it's beautiful and you should see it lit up at night. So it depends on the the itinerary uh, and the cruise line. Most will depart Budapest at night so you can mm -hmm. see it lit up. Mm -hmm. But if not, if they don't, I highly recommend taking like a dinner cruise on, on the Danube at night. Then they'll sail back and forth in front of the parliament building. It's all lit up. It's famous. It's just spectacular. Yeah, they they light up several miles of the the waterfront, mm -hmm. and the it's beautiful. They light. There's so much good all, architecture the along buildings. there. So you go up and down a couple times. You know, have your cocktails or your dinner. So after you depart uh, Budapest, and we're going upstream now. Mm -hmm. Now, what would be the next stop after that? We are talking about what we did on on the waterways. Yes, but. Mm -hmm. All the cruise lines do this, Upper Danube. So it'll be very similar. Um, they might have slightly different options for the stops. Yeah. And if I could interject before we continue to go upstream, you just said the Upper Danube. So you could do what the Lower Danube, the lower Danube. which is you go from Budapest. Uh, Budapest down towards the Black Sea. The Black Sea. Past so that, the Iron Gates. Yeah. yeah. So th that's a whole different itinerary. We're going upstream from mm -hmm. here yeah this just is wanted... just a, yeah it's just a very popular itinerary and not every cruise line goes down the lower danube mm -hmm. mama does there's a few others that do uh so it's not as popular when you sail from budapest mm -hmm. the next stop is usually bratislava okay which is in slovakia mm -hmm. there's again a lot of history <laughs> yes <laughs> which we are <laughs> not experts history. on we no. just but it's spectacular and yep. there's a, a big castle on the hill mm -hmm. you can do through the cruise line, they'll take you up there. You and and for Alma waterways, they have easy or gentle walking, um, mm -hmm. or a bus ride, or a hike, or you can do it by bike. You know, so it just depends on what they offer for that stop. But yeah, for for Alma, they will give you three options, at least three, yeah, uh, every every day, mm -hmm. generally based on effort. But um, um, yeah, so Bratislava is a, a neat little town. Yeah, it's I'd, great, uh, that I would say, but it does have a, a big. Uh, that's the, castle complex up on top. Yeah, that's the big draw for, for mm -hmm. that area. But mm -hmm. the last time I was there, just a couple of months ago, I did sail with Scenic mm -hmm. and they had e-bikes mm -hmm. uh, on the waterways. Their bikes are just regular bikes. So we did the e-bikes on Scenic and we got to ride along where the Iron Gate used to be. Oh, the Iron Curtain. Sorry, the Iron Curtain. Yeah, for the, where the for, Soviets yes. had blocked off. So they, they once the Iron Curtain came down, mm -hmm. they turned... Or the fencing was mm -hmm. to a bike path mm. bike and running path and it's beautiful and it goes miles 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 on the bikes and there's old bunkers that you can stop at they mm -hmm. turn one into a museum they fixed it up and um but some of them are just sitting there from when they built it during the war it was really yeah. fascinating yeah that's an interesting thing that you have the old history you know the, the kings and monarchs from the past and then you have this very stark Nazi and Soviet yes. history, you know, soon after the, the Nazis were defeated. Yeah. And the Soviet history, it's just, and then liberation uh, yeah, from absolutely. the Soviets. And fairly recent. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, and it's also just a beautiful part of the country. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. I a think, lot of history. I was just thinking, fun fact on uh, Hungary, you could stay in Budapest for about a week or so and mm -hmm. just do day trips from there yep. and see all of Hungary. It's yeah. actually not a very big country and there's lots to see lots right. of wine country and and other histories but i digress yes let's continue <laughs> I love Budapest. Can, continue so bratislava is wonderful too and then usually the next stop is vienna mm -hmm. and many itineraries will overnight in vienna and this is one port that is not easily uh walkable into town 
Yes, there, so, you will need to get on a, a quick shuttle. A, a shuttle bus or a the taxi. Cruise line will, the, the cruise line will definitely have like have a a shuttle bus scheduled hmm. to take you from your ship into the city center. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could walk it, but that's uh, challenging. It's, There's lots of busy streets. And... It's it's a long walk, so take the shuttle would be my recommendation. Yeah. So yeah, so Vienna is just a very big city. There's uh, so much related to the the Habsburgs. So it's an imperial city. There's a lot to do. There's mm-hmm. a lot to see. During yeah, the day. Terms, yeah, during the day. You'll be very busy there. The point being is that it's not very close. Mm-hmm. You're, the the ship, you'll have to take a, a small little bus ride mm-hmm. uh, to get to the city center. And then at night, as far as an excursion, I would definitely recommend that you, even if you're not a big a classical music <laughs> buff, it's a music city. Yes. So you would want to spend some time and make sure you go and listen to a concert, get, get one of those tickets and do a nighttime concert at one of the, these little uh, villas or things like that. Yeah. They're just fantastic. Some of the cruise lines will offer these optional excursions mm-hmm. and they cost a little bit more and you sign up for them once you're on the on the ship. Uh, and that's what we did. We, mm-hmm. we did it when we got on board and I think there were six of us mm-hmm. and we went and listen to a classical concert in this beautiful palace yeah. in the music room that was mm-hmm. built for listening to music like that. And yeah. it just, it would give you goose pimples because you know that for hundreds of years, mm-hmm. this is what was happening in this room. That's how it was used. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. absolutely. So that was, that was a, a great experience. Once you leave Vienna, uh, Vienna now where do we go? Uh, it, it's like Dernstein. Uh, Dernstein. Okay. Dernstein. And that's where the Milk Abbey is, mm-hmm. which is beautiful. And yeah, Milk, see. Milk Abbey, it's like a palace, but it is uh, actually a, well, it's an abbey. So it's obviously mm-hmm. owned by the church and uh, has a cathedral, I guess not a cathedral, but a church inside. A church, yeah. <laughs> inside. Yeah. And it's one of the most over the top Baroque, mm-hmm. uh, gold leaf, gold leafed everything. It's <laughs> every. Uh, it's just a really beautiful church, and it has so many relics mm-hmm. from the church. You know, it's, and some of these relics, not to be t- too macabre, it's usually some sort of body part of a saint yes. <laughs> encrusted <laughs> with jewels and things like that, which sounds a little odd to mm-hmm. me, not having been brought up in like that kind of tradition. But it's really kind of fascinating. Yeah. So anyway, Huge that's library, that's library, beautiful scenery up there as a school. So you'll see kids playing. That's right. That there was, was a school on property with yeah. this, you know, thing that's been going on for hundreds of years. That was and beautiful. so, so, Milk so that's Abbey. one of the option yeah. options. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a great little town that you can walk through mm-hmm. on your way back down to the to the ship. Yeah. So it's really easy to. That's a walkable stop. And then we got back on board and. It did a sailing to Grein, mm-hmm. and we went to Greinberg Castle. Greinberg Castle is really a fascinating spot. Um, it's still privately owned and operated by the royal family, and it's not a huge castle, but it's still lived-in castle mm-hmm. and just has, you know, still has furniture in it <laughs> that <laughs> that the family uses when it doesn't have tourists uh, tourists going through, and it's. It's it's a definitely a neat neat place right up on a hill. It is a bit of a hike. And what I will say is, mm-hmm. river cruising you can do as much or as little as you want. Mm-hmm. And I skipped that. Yes, you did. I did not want to go. You're like one <laughs> more castle. Done. I'm out. <laughs> I just needed some downtime. Yeah. And I I think it was the only one left on the yeah on the on the ship. And I enjoyed a nice book in the lounge with a glass of wine mm-hmm. on, the, on the beautiful Danube. And I came back and gave you a full report. Exactly. Yeah. It was very nice. Yep. So we don't yep. have to be attached to the hip all the time. Yeah, that's that is true. And then you've all, always got options. You can mm-hmm. opt in or opt out or like for around uh, Milk Abbey, I believe that there are some choices. Some yes. You could have gone to Milk Abbey. You could have gone to I think another there location. There was a forest hike. There was a bike tour. Yeah. Yeah. So there was definitely different options. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ama will give you some choices. Uh, sometimes you have to say, well, you know, I'm going to miss this or I'm going to miss that. But, you know, you're not going to make any bad decisions. We, I've never felt like we've made a bad no. decision so far. Which brings us to the next stop. Mm-hmm. It stopped in Linz. Mm-hmm. So you have the choice to either enjoy Linz yep. <laughs> or uh, go to Salzburg for a yes. full day. <laughs> Tour, which I was more excited about. <laughs> Why do people love Salzburg? Of course. Two things. Mm-hmm. Mozart. Yes. Me. 
<laughs> or the sound of music. <laughs> right. Something about Maria. Yeah. Right? More exciting. Yes. <laughs> For us more so. How to solve a problem like Maria. <laughs> yes. So Salzburg is... Uh, really interesting for that. So you'll have opportunity. You can go, you, you will go to the church where they filmed the wedding they scene, filmed which the, is not in Salzburg. That's on the way. Yeah, that's, that's on, on a on little lake. lake called the Mon- yeah. Monzi. Monzi. That was so pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So beautiful little town. And you'll see a lot of the background, uh, that, for, the background for that shots for that scene. Mm-hmm. And for some of the scene, uh, other scenes from that movie. Oh, with the kids as, hanging out of the tree. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. Right. So you'll see some of the, the background scenes that you would mm-hmm. be familiar with, with Sound of Music. So that's why a lot of people go there. Mm-hmm. And then Salzburg itself is, wow, just a really beautiful, old, fortified city town mm-hmm. that we really had a good time. You could spend a couple hours going through that castle that's on top. Up on the hill. Yeah, we up. took a vernacular up there. Mm-hmm. That was great. And yes. It's high up on this hill. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's super steep. Uh, really interesting. A, a good time there. And then the uh, old town, mm-hmm. there was a lot to do there. We happened to be there while there was a uh, some sort of market festival, festival going yeah. on. So you know, there's beer and wine vendors everywhere and all sorts of tiny little sausages and <laughs> things <laughs> like that. So yeah, that was a, it was a really great day. But we were on the bus like back and forth uh, a couple hours mm-hmm. to get back to the ship. So Salzburg is not on the Danube River, Mm-mm. but you know, you had a, That's uh, a full day. You had a full day. But it didn't that. feel like we we spent so much time on the bus that it was not worth it. They did stop at you know Monzi on the way there, and mm-hmm. by the end, you're tired anyway. Maybe get a little nap in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that ship. was a that was a really good day. Yeah, and, that was uh, a great day. You know, super adjacent to to Lentz. You know where the mm-hmm. ship was docked. Okay, so after uh, Lentz, so that, then where did we? So go? then the next day we ended up in Passau in the morning. Passau, mm-hmm. Passau. That was really that's nice. in Germany now. Yes. Okay. So that was a, another little town just right there off the ship. We mm-hmm. just walked out. Mm-hmm. We took a walking tour. We yep. chose the walking tour. And that mm-hmm. was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Really pretty. But you can, they had a castle hike. Uh, they had a, a bike tour. And then we got back on the ship and we went to Vilshofen. Mm-hmm. And we got into town and they set up an Oktoberfest just for us. Yes. Just for the Alma Waterways guests. And I got, so much I got to say my expectations for that were not high. I was like, how but wild, gonna be? Yeah, exactly. But it was really a lot of fun. There's a lot of things that they do and songs that they sing and dances that they have that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I loved it. And the music quality was mm-hmm. really good. Everybody was, you know, banging their glasses on the tables <laughs> and having a good we time. We had a lot of good beer and pretzels. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great so, time. Yeah. And that's where the river portion of the, uh, of this expedition mm-hmm. ended. Right. Yes. So we. So that was the end of our seven nights. Yeah. So you're on Vilshaven, but the the tour itself continues on. Yes. So if you choose to do the land portion through the cruise line, mm-hmm. you can pre and post. We did. Mm-hmm. We did do both sides. Mm-hmm. So we came in a couple of days early, did it with Alma Waterways. So we were with Alma Waterways guests mm-hmm. in the hotel. We had our tour director, the same one that we had on the ship. Yeah. We had on land before mm-hmm. and after, so it was nice. So if you had any questions or needed anything, you had someone Mm -hmm. and all the cruise lines do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we chose to do the post uh, land package through Alma Waterways, Mm -hmm. which was in Prague. Yes. So then they took us from the ship to Prague by bus. So by doing that, we're able to get on the bus and then we are included on some tours uh, Mm -hmm. and a hotel in Prague. Yeah. So we made lots of good friends uh, on on that uh, that cruise and some of them opted to not do the post cruise, right. but is my memory wrong? Didn't weren't they still like on the bus with us? Yes. You could still pay so for with, the transfer. True, through Alma Waterways, you can pay for the transfer. They'll take you to the hotel mm-hmm. that we, the rest of us were staying at, and then if you're staying somewhere else, you just have to get yourself. Yeah, and we, we had a couple cruise cruise buddies that opted for that. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, where are you going? It's like, oh, I'm just going down the street and I'm going to do my own thing. So, exactly. So you don't have to be locked in with that. But I thought that that, oh, that was kind nice. of like splitting the difference. You could still be with your friends. And you could, if you're going to Prague anyway, mm-hmm. and that would be something, you know, you could you could do in a way that you could get there, but you could still do your own hotel. And it's funny because as we're touring <laughs> through the city, we kept bumping into our old yeah. friends and say, oh, <laughs> oh what, what are you what doing? Are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm going over here. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Prague. What just uh, This is not a travel explanatory on yeah, Prague like itself. 
to but depth. But what are some of the highlights of that's Prague? another city that's very walkable. Mm-hmm. It's big, but it's walkable. Yep. Um, and of course, they have a castle too. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a famous bridge, the Charles Bridge. Charles Bridge, yes. So and the cathedral, cathedral, on, yeah, and a lot of obviously history mm-hmm. and a lot of World War II history, which. We hired a private guide our last day. We had a free day. Yes. And we hired a private guide to take us around and show us some of the history from World War II. Yeah. And she showed us a lot of the, so a a lot of the history was really interesting. There's a a movie that was talking about some of the, some, I guess, dissidents at that time that uh, tried to assassinate one of the major Nazi officials Mm -hmm. who was running the city at that time. And uh, their adventure of what happened after that assassination attempt. The fascinating slice so. of life right there. Um, but my takeaway is hire local guides. Mm-hmm. You'll never miss that money. Because mm-hmm. not only did she give us the tour of uh, what we asked for, we wanted to know about that particular you know, slice story. of life and yeah. that story. But remember all the different kind of back alleys that mm-hmm. she took us through and all the different uh, kind of pieces of art. There's mm-hmm. a lot of art in the city, which you would walk right by. Or not know where to find it. Yeah. But she would, you know, take us into this little area here and just like point up and say, hey, can you see this little st- structure? Yeah. yeah. There's one. I challenge you to find it. <laughs> there is a gigantic fly it's about seven or eight feet long oh, that's right that's mounted up on top of a building yeah. and it's a fame and there's a couple other famous sculptures in that neighborhood that are like that that, was spectacular. that if you if you don't know where to look you'll never ever see it yeah. so anyway for a lot of reasons get a local guide and mm-hmm. we we just had a, a fantastic day uh, mm-hmm. with her yeah. yeah we had some tours through ama you know some mm-hmm. some guides um but when we had time you know we had i think our last day mm-hmm. we had the whole day to ourselves so that we had a guide for about four hours yeah and prague is a fantastic city again kind of like budapest and vienna mm-hmm. on this itinerary those are the big the biggest three cities uh that have modern city plus ancient history mm-hmm. and architecture you know just a lot of things to wander around so you, you can it, i call it a world city you can spend an awful lot of time in, yeah definitely would go back for sure there's mm-hmm. a lot more to see Mm-hmm. And then, um, just happenstance, our flight got canceled. Yes, coming <laughs> back from Prague, mm-hmm. and there wasn't another flight out for several days. Uh, and we'd had enough of Prague, even though we love it. Yeah, we had a good time, but yeah. so we kind of shifted our thinking and said, "Okay, where can we fly out of? Um, I'll hire a driver, and we can stop along the way." So I found a flight out of Frankfurt. And saw that Nuremberg was about halfway. And so we had a private driver come pick us up from Mm -hmm. the hotel and took us a very relaxing, scenic, Mm -hmm. beautiful Mm -hmm. drive. Um, And then we stopped in Nuremberg for lunch. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we were just really tired at this point. Yeah, I don't think we got all of (laughs) out of Nuremberg that we could could possibly. So it's famous for the Nuremberg trials, but Mm -hmm. it's also a beautiful medieval city. It's really pretty. Yeah, Another castle. But we... Uh, had lunch there and mm-hmm. had a, a nice beer in a beer garden. Yeah, you know, they had a little festival with mm-hmm. knickknacks and you know home goods. Yeah, great, great city. I'd like to explore that more. Yeah. Uh, for me, the takeaway was what you were just explaining, which was getting from Prague to we went to Frankfurt, Frankfurt yeah. via private private car. Yeah, it wasn't all that expensive. I think it was like what two or three hundred euros, like two hundred euros or something. It was cheaper, if not cheaper, the same price as a flight from Prague mm-hmm. to. Frankfurt, but we could stop along the way. We yep. could somebody walk else around. Was driving. Somebody else was driving, and it didn't take us that long. It wasn't yeah. like an eight-hour day. Yeah, and I think we hit the jackpot with this particular driver because he was fluent in English mm-hmm. and was very proud of the scenery that we're easy driving to, through. And he very was, easy to talk to yep. and ask questions, mm-hmm. and just told us so much more history about about the country yep. that we were coming through. So. Yep. We finally just stayed in a uh, an airport hotel adjacent to Frankfurt and then got on our flight mm-hmm. and came home. So that's the Danube itinerary mm-hmm. going from uh, Budapest all the way up to Vilshaven. Then we did the optional visit to Prague. Somebody could also just disembark at Vilshaven and go to really any place anywhere. else. So <laughs> the other off, so. the other city that's adjacent that's also a major world city is Munich. Mm-hmm. 
I've, I've gone to Munich many, many times for business and just it has a lot to offer. Mm-hmm. It was the the seat of kings for the, the Saxon kings. So there's really an awful lot of uh, history and the cathedrals that they have there are just, you know, out of this world. So, And if you do the cruise in reverse direction, if you go downstream mm-hmm. and you're starting in like Vilshofen or Passau, most of them will have you fly into Munich. And if you go in October, then mm-hmm. you get to enjoy Oktoberfest and go to the tents and you know, enjoy yeah. the true Oktoberfest yeah. before the cruise, which is very popular. So why don't you tell us about what are the optimal times for this this itinerary? For weather and cost, mm-hmm. May mm-hmm. and September, October. Mm-hmm. Um, June, July, August, very hot, mm-hmm. can be very crowded. August, all the Europeans are going on vacation and it tends to be more expensive. So going on a shoulder season, like May or October, you're going to have a little cooler weather and and better pricing. Okay. And there's also some options going from Budapest upstream and then from Vilshaven downstream to mm-hmm. Budapest. The other options would be like uh, in terms of uh, themes. So there's a, you, you mentioned to me that oh, yeah. there's a wine theme. So there cruise. some, a lot of the cruise lines will do wine theme cruises mm-hmm. and they do it on the Danube and more so on the Rhine mm-hmm. and other, other rivers. Uh, but they'll be themed. If you happen to get on one of these river cruises, there there will be a wine host mm-hmm. on board, and that will be the winemaker mm-hmm. of said winery. It'll be a fairly big name that's mm-hmm. on on the ship. The winemaker will be on board, and he mm-hmm. will have some of his wine, but obviously you're in a wine region, so mm-hmm. <laughs> they're going to have both options. Yeah. But he may have a lecture. Mm-hmm. He may have a custom uh, excursion in one or two towns, mm-hmm. but it's all going to be themed around wine. Yeah. And we didn't mention it because we didn't take advantage of it, but uh, it seemed like many days there was an option to go wine tasting uh, along the route, especially around Dernstein. That place is really well known for uh, Grunerveld. It's really well known for Riesling. So there was a lot of times where your option could have been to go on a wine tasting, but we were thinking, oh, we can drink wine. The- <laughs> we'll be tasting wine at dinner. <laughs> a lot of it, <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and afterwards. So I think we we kind of stuck with a lot of the options related to getting to a particular mm-hmm. church or a city tour History, or things yeah. like that. A little bit more historical stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So talk about the time of the year. There's different kinds of uh, themes on there. How... Would you rate the difficulty of this trip? I mean, for I would, for folks. Yeah, I would recommend doing this when you're physically able. Mm-hmm. There are challenges mm-hmm. to those that are not as physically abled. For instance, even on the ship itself, there are elevators mm-hmm. from the very low part of the ship if you're staying down there up mm-hmm. to the what they call the third deck. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't take you to the sun deck, which is the very top deck that's open. You can walk, and sit up there. Okay. Uh, you have to take stairs because yeah. you're going through locks and under bridges and mm-hmm. it can't have an elevator up there. Mm-hmm. So and then into town, it's not ADA compliant. That's mm-hmm. an American thing. Mm-hmm. So there's cobblestone streets. There's narrow mm-hmm. doorways, lots and lots of stairs. There's not going to be elevators. So do it while you can. Mm-hmm. Do it while you're I would say you do those first. Yeah, I would say you need a moderate level of mobility Mm -hmm. uh, to to truly enjoy everything. So you don't have to go up every staircase. You don't have to go up (laughs) every hill, every castle that they say, hey, it's up there. You don't have to do that. Yeah. There's usually a motorized version, at least on AMA. Yes. There was like a a, an easy, a a moderate and strenuous option generally. And, you know, the, the bus will take you there. But you need but to be able to climb a few stairs at least. A, a few stairs and even getting up the stairs uh, on and off the bus. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, you know. Yeah, we had a woman with a with a cane. Mm-hmm. You know, she did fine. She did great. Yeah. And everybody kind of just looked after her because you just didn't did want to make sure she wasn't going to have Yeah, a, but if you issue. are reliant on a walker or a wheelchair, unfortunately, river cruising is just not. It's going to be tough. Yeah. It's just not a good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Europe is tough for that kind of thing. So that's a that's an overview of the Danube. We'll be talking about the Rhine as a, another option for Wonderful a, option. a river. Uh, yeah. They're both. You, you can't go they're wrong. They're both unique. I find the Rhine to be more picturesque mm. with the deep valleys and the vineyards growing up the side of the hill, coming yep. up the river. Mm-hmm. and. It's more castles on the top of the hill. And Mm -hmm. I felt like the Danube had more like cities on the river, more historical towns. Mm -hmm. 
I, it just felt different and both were great in their own right. What I love about the the Danube is because you get to see some of the smaller towns, plus you also get to see uh, three or more world cities, Budapest, Vienna, and Prague. I think they're just out of this world and it should be on everybody's list. Uh, what's your final thoughts you'd like to conclude with? I would say kind of recapping to us, just what we talked about is do the tough trips first. Mm-hmm. So yep. do this while you can mm-hmm. and know it's going to cost a little bit more than ocean cruising. If that's where you come from mm-hmm. in your travel history, mm-hmm. uh, just because the ships are smaller, they're more intimate. Yep. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but it is a wonderful way, a wonderful way of seeing so much of mm-hmm. Europe. Yeah. floating hotel you're in the destination every yeah. day yeah. you're in this beautiful country and it's kind of like a, a bus tour without or a land tour mm-hmm. uh without having to check into a hotel every night <laughs> exactly. and all those sorts of things there's pluses and minuses but that's Absolutely. definitely a huge a huge plus what's your takeaway yeah it's a great way to see a lot in a short amount of time and you know you're enjoying the the benefits of being on a, a river cruise. So it feels like the ship itself is uh, entertaining. There's a lot to do. The food is good. They're going to have entertainment on on board as well. In addition to all these things, usually as a sail away, as you leave mm-hmm. a city, you know, they're going to have some sort of evening entertainment, mm-hmm. things like that. So there's, there's a lot to do there. For me, a big takeaway was demystifying Budapest. <laughs> <laughs> when we were flying to Budapest, it's like, what is this place that you're going to like? I don't know. Is it is it going to feel like you're in the Orient, you know, getting to more Eastern Europe? Or is it going to feel like Europe? Anything I know, I had no clue. But for me, it really demystified Budapest and demystified Hungary mm-hmm. to a large extent for me. It gave me the confidence, that, oh, this is someplace I want to explore a little bit more. And I think this is going to be our thought when we do the Lower Danube and we go to these very unique, unknown, you know, that not yes. everybody goes to. Yeah, at least countries. <laughs> you know? yes. We're going to learn a lot about that part of the world. Right. I look forward to demystifying <laughs> yeah. the, the lower Danube. Absolutely. That would be our, our next portion is continue to go downstream from Budapest. Mm-hmm. So, so for those that are not familiar with the options for river cruise lines, who are the majors that they should consider? We've talked about yeah, AMA. There's lots who, of different ones. So there's else, Viking, there's AMA Waterways, Avalon Waterways, Uniworld. Those are probably the ones you've heard mm-hmm. of, but there are others. There's Amadeus, there's mm-hmm. Scenic, Emerald, Tauk, mm-hmm. Crystal. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. The new crystal, Riverside. Riverside, yes. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. Riverside bought the crystal ships mm-hmm. and they're beautiful. So there's other cruise lines that mm-hmm. you may not have heard of that do the Danube, the upper Danube wonderfully. Yep. So it's just, they're all just slightly different. Mm-hmm. Each has their own unique brand and what yeah. they have to offer. And in another episode, we might get into some of those differences. But yeah, there's so many different suppliers that you can utilize mm-hmm. for this particular itinerary. and. I don't think any of them are going to do a bad job. No, I think it's, it's they all do be, wonderful. Yeah, I think you'll do have a really great experience with this. All right. So again, your recommendation: thumbs up, thumbs down for River twenty Cruises. thumbs up. If, if I had twenty thumbs, I'd say do it. That's yeah. a lot of thumbs. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. I, I I'd probably add on another twenty thumbs and maybe some toes on there too. Yep, definitely so, go do it. Definitely go do it. Remember, a path to someday leads to a town called nowhere. So let's grab our passports and let's go somewhere. Let's get going. Let's do it. Thanks for listening to Passport Required. Please be sure and join the Silverleaf Travel Facebook page so that we can connect with you. It is also a great place to share your own travel tips, experiences, and wisdom with the Silverleaf Travel community. If you got something out of this episode, we would love it if you would subscribe and also give us a rating and review. We always want to get better and we will read all of your comments and suggestions for topics so that we can make this podcast the best resource possible. My name is Gary Covert. And I'm Kim Covert. Thanks for listening and thank you for being a part of the Silverleaf Travel Community. 